the latest figures on this, that the number of people who've arrived in the UK on small boats has risen above 5,000 by the end of March for the first time. And that period, January to March, has been the busiest first quarter for crossings on record, mm. which, you know, it's it's not a good statistic, is mm. it, for the government, Mercy, when you wish you soon I could pledge to get the number of... Well, well not down. at all. And I think, actually, um, we're probably set for another record year um, in terms of sm small boat crossings. And I think, actually, this is why we... The government needs to do something about it. And, actually... I, I know that the Rwanda scheme has been incredibly controversial, but I am convinced it will be a deterrent, personally. Um, and so you well, still think that's the answer? Can I interrupt you there? Uh, interview after interview that have been done with people yeah. who, are, who are gathered uh, on the other side of the channel, waiting to, to jump on a boat and come over, yeah. they, this has been put to them. Yeah. Are you deterred by being possibly having to go to Rwanda once you get to Britain? And every single one, without exception, has said no. Well, that's because it hasn't happened yet. That's because they, they, they see it as a fantasy, a fantasy. So I'm not saying, you know, I'm massively worried about Rwanda. I think the right thing to do is to have a deterrent in place. I think that's the way to break um, the business model, to sort of uh, cut the head off the snake of people trafficking and so what, what are the other alternatives on the on the table i don't see any other alternatives being put forward by any other other party labor says things like we'll cooperate more with the eu i mean what does that mean that's, that's not well, a we're hoping to talk solution. about the yeah, but, of labor but, in a couple of minutes yeah, about but, this so but, we'll the, but the government does have other cards on the on the table for instance it did it's, pay, it's paying half a billion to france which did reduce the number of people coming across along with like return schemes with Albania, because last year it was about roughly 30,000 people came, the year before it was 45,000. So it was reduced, but it seems to be going up now. Now, people know Rwanda is just a gimmick because it's, you're talking about 300 people. Mm. If the government gets its scheme going, you're talking about 300 people. But you've it's had a deterrent. Five, you've had, well, Aspect. how is it a deterrent? If you've got 5,000, you can do the sums, that's mean 4,700 won't come. If you do three, 300 on last year when 30,000 came, it meant you had a one in 100 chance chance of going to Rwanda. But, but we don't and then know under the that. terms we of the agreement, yes, you do. It hasn't been allowed yes, you to, do. to give it. Because the government's own figures show it will be 300 this year. 300, mm. and you've got 30,000 coming, like I say. That's one in 100. But, but and finally, do, do you finally, agree but that finally it, yeah. under the terms of your agreement, you may, you may not know this, but under the terms of agreement, somebody set, uh, deported on a one way ticket from Britain to Rwanda. They commit a crime in Rwanda, they're sent back to Britain. Now, come on. It's not a no-brainer. You don't want to be in Rwanda, what do you do? You commit a crime and you return to Britain. Mm. Um, just moving away agreement, from the whole Rwanda the aspect of it, um, I just look at the figures. I mean, yeah. you and I have done interviews in the last five, six, seven years about this, this story, and every time we, we talk to a Tory government minister about it, they tell us they're on top of the problem. They're getting on top of the problem. Any minute now, the numbers are going to come down. 5,000 this year mm. so far. Yeah. It's worse than... Ever. Well, that's exactly why I'm saying there needs to be a deterrent. And I don't know what, what is your no, you, solution you, you, you for a deterrent. You just say Rwanda. What's, uh, you say what's Rwanda, your solution for a not, deterrent? But hang on, but you just say Rwanda. It's, a, it's an easy word that covers <clears throat> uh, the fact there is no easy solution. And yes, and Labour, Labour have got their five point plan, mm. some of which is very similar to what the government is doing in terms of yeah. getting returns agreements, processing claims quickly, which the government hasn't done, which is why there is such a huge yeah. backlog, disrupting the business model, getting a special unit for law enforcement to well, that's deal what you with do. the people traffickers. Let's ask what Labour would do now. You asked that question. Well, we, we can ask one of the guys concerned. Uh, this is Pat McFadden. He's uh, from the Labour National Campaign Coordination Team. He's the actual full coordinator. Good morning, Mr McFadden. Good morning. Thank you for Good joining morning. us. All right, let's say the election's tomorrow. You guys storm it in. How will you deal with the immigration problem? How would you cut that number from 5,000 down to three, two, one, and then zero? How would you do it? Well, I'd never like to uh, assume the result of any election, but uh, if it did come to pass in the way that you just said, uh, we look at the money being spent on this. It's 500 million pounds to, uh, even if it worked uh, in the way that it's been set out, to send 300 people to mm. Rwanda. That's a almost £2 million per person. We think that £500 million could be better used with a tough new cross-border policing unit uh, to actually crack down on the boats coming over. You need international cooperation uh, to do this. Britain can't do it alone because it's an international problem. That's why Keir Starmer and Yvette Cooper, our Shadow Home Secretary, have gone to Europol said that he would use the kind of anti-terror laws that we have to crack down on the criminal gangs. 
We'd also process the applications quicker so that people aren't held in limbo and you can decide more quickly who's legitimate and who's not legitimate because not doing that adds to the cost and we've got this huge hotel cost mm -hmm. where the country's spending a couple of billion pounds a year just putting people up in hotels whether we haven't even decided whether they're entitled to be here or not. Can we just drill down into the detail of what you said in, in the beginning of that answer? You talk about this cross-border unit that you'd beef up. Can you tell me in detail how that would operate? Are we talking about cops in boats? Are we talking yeah. about sending British police across the Channel to France to help the French? Are we talking about paying the French more money to employ more gendarmerie to, to stop these gangs? How would it actually work? Because uh, we are spending a lot of money on this and it's not working. Uh, well, we spend a lot of money on Rwanda, uh, but we think that money could be better yeah, you used... you said that. Can I, I just want to know the policing... detail of how this... Yeah. I want to know... I want you to paint me a picture of how this, this cross-border unit that you spoke about would actually operate in detail. How would it work? Well, you have to employ the officers uh, to work with those who are doing some of this work already. Some of it is about cooperation with other countries, as I say, because it's an international problem, this, and throughout Europe countries are faced with this flow of people uh, and it's about uh, making sure that you've got the right powers in place and if we need to use the kind of laws that we use to crack down on terrorism then we should use those too. The point is how can you get the best value for money in what is a very very difficult problem. I don't pretend that uh, cracking down on this problem is easy but spending 500 million pounds to send yeah, you said just that. a couple yeah, you hundred said people away do doesn't already, strike us as the best value for money. We do already spend hundreds of millions of pounds, mm. don't we, giving that money to mm. France to do that. And from it's what you're working. saying then, that's not working, is it? So well, why would we then throw more money at trying to do that when that approach isn't working? If we weren't cooperating with France, I suspect the numbers would be even higher. And that's the difficult truth <laughs> about a difficult problem. So if we took the view that nothing we are doing in terms of international cooperation is working. I think that would be a dangerous viewpoint to take because although these numbers are high, if we weren't having any international cooperation on it, they'd probably be even higher because there'd be nothing to stop people I think that's at a very all. Fair, that's a very fair point. Do you think, with regards to sort of, you know, how long these measures are going to take mm. place, because, you know, it's going to take time, isn't it, to set up these agreements, it's going to take time to mm. smash the organised crime gangs. In the meantime, the numbers will be pouring in. You're still processing the claims here in the UK. And we know from the figures that actually a significant number of people who have their claims processed are actually allowed to stay here because they have valid claims. The whole point is we want to try and put people off coming as soon as possible, don't we? We have to separate out the, those who have a valid claim and those who don't. If people don't have a valid claim, they shouldn't be here. But some people do have a valid claim. One of the other problems about the current system is you have tens of thousands of people just being put up either in hotels or in other accommodation. They're not allowed to work, can't make any contribution, and they're being put up at the taxpayer's expense. It's costing six or seven million pounds a day. We spend a couple of billion pounds a year on this. Mm. And it's a couple of billion pounds that's spent just keeping people in limbo. That's not a good bargain for the taxpayer and it doesn't resolve the problem right. either. So there's the question of the boats coming and then there's the question of what happens when people actually get to the UK. There's, there's another, a much bigger question as well, isn't there? Let's just step back from this and, 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 and contemplate it. Why does Labour think that so many immigrants want to come here why aren't they content to settle in France or Germany or any of the countries that they cross on their way to the Channel Coast? Why are they prepared to risk their lives getting in these god-awful boats to come here in such numbers? What is it about Britain which attracts them? What's Labour's view on that? Well, I think the inference behind your question is that we have far more asylum claims than the countries you mentioned. That's not the case. Uh, there are tens of thousands of asylum claims in France, Germany, Italy these other countries. It isn't the case uh, that uh, everybody who travels through Europe all want to come to Britain. Very often, other countries have actually got more asylum claims per year than we have. So there's a bit of a myth about this, mm. that the whole traffic is coming to the UK. Usually, when people want to come to the UK, it's because they've got some link to the UK in the first place. It might be a family member or 
uh, part of their community who's already here, uh, already here. But it's not the case that people are not claiming asylum in other Fair European enough. countries. I talk to other European politicians. This is an issue and a problem and a difficulty throughout Europe. It's not a specifically British issue. One more question and, like, literally 20 seconds to answer it, if you don't mind. Uh, OK, Labour wins the next election. You put your policies in place. How long before the problem... It'll never go away completely, but how long do you think before the problem becomes properly containable? Look, I think we take this seriously, but it's a tough problem, and that's why it's going to create good policing and international work to get those numbers down. OK. Pat McFadden, thank you thank for you. joining us this morning.